Hi guys. <laughs> we can do better than that. Hi guys, how you doing? There you go. Thanks for the introduction. My name is Raj Mathai with NBC Bay Area News, and uh, I have to say right away that I don't like Gunn High School. I went to Los Altos High School down the road, so it took me a lot to get out of bed and come here today. No, I'm just kidding. It's a pleasure to be here, but I did go to Los Altos High School, so uh, I know a lot about Gunn, and I know it's a great school, and, and I think this is a great program. So uh, let me just tell you about, um, about myself and kind of some some things I've used to, to advance my career, not only professionally, but, but just personally, um, to not just to, to get ahead. I'm not all about trying to get ahead and trying to get that next job or trying to get ahead of the next person, but just to, to, to survive and really just thrive in what I do. And regardless of what you all want to get into, um, be an engineer, a doctor, a garbage man, a teacher, whatever you want to do, professional athlete perhaps, there's a few things that I've learned over the years that, that can help any career and help you guys um, perhaps in terms of maybe inspire you or, or to get you to that next level. Um, in a nutshell, what I do now, um, for many years I was a sportscaster and just last year I transferred into the news department and I'm the primary news anchor at NBC here in the Bay Area. And it's been a fantastic job. It's been a great challenge. Uh, but, but getting to where I am now, um, like anyone that's gonna talk to you today, everyone has a unique story, everyone has challenges and what they faced. Um, but one thing that I've always thought of is, it doesn't matter what your GPA is, if you have a four, um, I, when I was growing up, there was only a 4.0. Now there's, how, do, how high does it go up to? 4.5? Wow. So whether you have 4.5, a 3.5, a 2.5, obviously the better grades, you know, the better pre prepared you are. But regardless of your GPA or how well you play the violin or the piano or how great you are in the sports field, you have to be able to be creative, whether you're trying to get into that college or trying to get that job out of college. Everyone's trying to get in that front door of that house. I always think of it as a house. The job's out there, the college is out there, everyone's crowding the front door to try to get in. But nowadays, and even when I was in high school in the 1980s and getting my first jobs in the 1990s, you have to be creative and kind of get to the other entries of the house to get in. Check the back door, check upstairs, go through the fire engine, go through the fire hatch, <laughs> go through the balcony, whatever. Get creative, don't show up where everyone else shows up in that front door, or your chances of getting in that house, you want to get in this great house, your chances are limited. So a couple of examples, and you'll get these examples from Silicon Valley leaders, from athletes, from journalists, whatever. Usually the best things that happen are, weren't supposed to happen. You created these great breaks for yourself. You didn't just show up at the front door and say, hey, I want to come into this great company, or hey, I want to come into this great university. You got creative and thought outside of the box. Uh, when I went to college um, at San Diego State, I knew right away, I knew since I was seven years old that I wanted to be a journalist. Um, I got hired from India in, in the late 1970s, turned on the TV, and right away I knew, I want to be a sportscaster and a newscaster. I want to do news on TV or sports. So really, I had the advantage since I was seven years old of knowing what I wanted to do, and I geared myself towards that, just because it was a passion of mine. And most of the people, in fact, most of the people in this room, you probably won't know what you want to do exactly. That's okay, as long as you stay passionate about something, as long as you stay active about something and put yourself in a position. So anyway, I get to San Diego State, coming out of Los Altos High School, and I knew, okay, I wanted to work in television, I wanted to work in sports, I need an internship, like most of you will do, or already have done. And I wanted to work for the San Diego Chargers. And of course, there's gonna be thousands of resumes and cover letters and everything for the San Diego Chargers for an unpaid internship. And I knew that was gonna happen. I called, I said, hey, how do I get an internship? And you get the whole routine. Oh, send us a cover letter, send us why you wanna do this, and you know, we'll put it in the queue and we'll get back to you. And I knew that wasn't gonna work. I just knew. Once again, getting back to that analogy, I wanted to get in that house, everyone's crowding the front door, so I had to think. So I got on my bike, I was a freshman at San Diego State, biked down the hill towards Jack Murphy Stadium where they play or where the offices were. I didn't think about how I was gonna get back because it was an uphill getting back, but that's another story. Um, biked down the hill, 
knocked on the door of the, of the team and somehow they let me in. And I said, I want to meet with the director of public relations, Bill Johnston. I said, who the heck are you? And so I go to San Diego State, I'm going to be interning for them. And um, they said, you're, you want to or are you going to be? I said, no, no, I'm, I'm going to be. He said, it's interesting. <laughs> so the secretary was really great. I, she must have seen something, something that stood out, that here I was trying to barge down the back door uh, to get into this, this sports organization. She said, young man, sit on the side here. He's in a meeting. Uh, he'll be out, he'll be with you in a moment. I said, great. And um, the boss comes out of his meeting, and at the time he was meeting with two broadcasters um, who were going to cover the Chargers game that weekend, and it was O.J. Simpson and the late Bill Walsh. So they walk out of the office, and they shake my hand, thinking I'm one of the Chargers employees. <laughs> so that was nice. Uh, and then eventually I make my way into the office and meet with Bill Johnson. I said, hey, I want to intern. I've been passionate about this since I was seven years old. I told essentially the story I just told you. And he said, okay, you know what? I'm impressed about your hustle. Write me a letter, what you just told me. Write me. There was no email back then, really. He said, write me a letter, and that way I have something formal on file, and then um, come drop it off. He said, how'd you get here? Because he see me, you know, my pants are cuffed up and everything. I said, I biked. And he said, oh, interesting. <laughs> so I wrote him the letter that night, biked down the hill the next day again, dropped off the letter to him, and once you know, he said, hey, what are you doing Sunday? And I said, nothing. He said, okay. We play the Cincinnati Bengals, show up here at the press box, and it's unpaid, but you're working for the Chargers. So that was it. And that was really a really good example. Once again, it doesn't matter if you want to go into sports or engineering or being a doctor or anything. Find that back door. It's, most of the time, it might not work. But you don't need most of the time. You just need one time for it to work. And that launched me into a great run with the Chargers. It was the, one of the worst teams in the NFL at that point. This was 1990. <laughs> but wouldn't you know, a couple years later, we were one of the best teams in the NFL. We were in the Super Bowl playing the 49ers. We got our butt kicked, but that's another story. Um, so that was just one example of how you can do things to put yourself in a situation that everyone else is at that front door and you've got to go to the back door. Um, that led to me to an internship with the NBC station in San Diego. And so a couple of years later, I graduate from San Diego State. I was interning simultaneously with the NBC station, as well as working for the Chargers. And then I knew, OK, now I need that first job, and I need, want to get on television. And so you make, a, you make an audition tape, and you send it everywhere in the country. And I'm not talking about Chicago or New York or San Francisco. I'm talking about Monroe, Louisiana, um, Ada, Oklahoma. Coos Bay, Oregon. Has anyone heard of any of these cities? Yeah, well, that's where, that's where I was sending tapes. That's what you have to do when you're starting in television, at least at that point. Sent out 40 tapes, 40 rejections. In fact, I didn't even get 40 rejections. 38 of the st stations I sent the tape to didn't even call back. So technically, it wasn't a rejection. It was just uh, no one even called me. Uh, two stations did call me and said, thanks, but no thanks. And you're actually excited to get that rejection because someone's actually calling you back. <laughs> so once again, I think, OK, so here I am again. Everyone's trying to crowd through that front door. What do I do? How do I differentiate myself? So I got in my car. And I remember coming home to the Bay Area, to Los Altos, where, I was, where my parents lived. I said, OK, I'm going to drive, come home on a winter break or a summer break or something like that, drive to Chico. And I'm just going to knock on the doors of these television stations, all three stations in Chico. And that's going to work, because it worked with the Chargers, so that's going to work. Mm -hmm. So I went to Chico, met with all three stations, same thing I did with the Chargers, just showed up at the door and handed them my tape, and that didn't work. Then I said, okay, let me, let me try Bakersfield. So I drove to Bakersfield the next weekend, met with all three stations, again, zero. A month later, drove to Tucson, Arizona, met with those stations, it didn't work. So now all of a sudden, you know, your confidence is getting tested. Things aren't working. You thought, oh my gosh, what happened to that great story about the Chargers when I just showed up? And I said, well, let me just keep trying. Went to Yuma, Arizona. Met with all three stations. At the time, it didn't work. They said thanks, but no thanks. Went back to San Diego, and now I'm starting to think, oh gosh. Graduated from college. I want to get into TV. Do I have to move back to Los Altos and live with my parents? I really don't want to do that. And wouldn't you know, right then, Yuma, NBC and Yuma, they said, you know what? We have hired someone else to be the sportscaster. The guy backed out at the last minute. 
and we need someone quick. You're not really our best choice or our first choice, but you're that weirdo that showed up at our front door on Tuesday. This guy backed out on Thursday. We need someone to start on Monday. And you only live in San Diego, which is two hours away. So can you do it? You're not very good, but come on out. Can you do it? And it worked. Had I not barged down their door, they wouldn't have known about me. I would have been one of the stack of 200 audition tapes that they had, but we made it work. So just think of those stories like that. And it's not always going to work out because think of me in Chico and Bakersfield and Tucson, those stations passed on me, but that station in Yuma was able to do it. And from Yuma, then the ball was rolling. I stayed there for two years, went to NBC in Fresno. and. I actually went through the front door in Fresno. I didn't have to go through any weird angles to get that job. And then NBC in Fresno, then came here to NBC in the Bay Area, in the front door again. So it's not all about going in the back door. Um, sometimes, many times, you have to go the normal way where everyone else is. But just keep that in mind, that get creative in whatever you do and what you do, because there's always a link there. So I got to the Bay Area, um, where I grew up, so it's great to be here. It's, it's something that obviously that's just, I care about this community so much and that, I don't want to sound cheesy here, but I do because I was in your seat. 19, well, you guys, what do we have, sophomores, juniors, seniors here? Yeah. Okay, so in 1987, 88, 89, when I was your guys' age, I was sitting in your seat and we had speakers come in and some of the speakers were, I was like, oh, okay, cool. Some were really great and, and, and so this community, I know all about it because I am you, you know, you are me, We're all, we all share this community. And living and working in Yuma and Fresno, I love those communities as well, but this is my community, this is where I grew up. So it's, it's really special to me for, for me to work here. Um, in sports, I, like I told you, I was, uh, I was in sports up until just last year, and some amazing stories. And, and, I, and I, I never look at sports, I didn't and I still don't, as, oh, you know what, it's sports. I look at sports as community stories, from a little soccer player that's 10 years old to Barry Bonds and the Giants. It's all community. It doesn't matter how much you're getting paid, if you're getting paid, and how many home runs you hit, but these are all people that we share the community with. Some of the great stories that I covered just here in the last 10 years, you guys lived through it as well. You were probably a lot younger, but the Raiders being in the Super Bowl in 2002, that was a phenomenal run. Barry Bonds hitting all the home runs. We followed him around the country which was great, and most recently, the Giants winning the World Series. I mean, these are, these are things that, you have Giants fans here? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so these are things that, you know, when, when, when you're all are my age in your 40s, you're gonna say, wow, I remember that, because I remember when the 49ers were going to all the Super Bowls in the 80s. You know, these things stick out. Even if you're not a sports fan, you'll remember these times. You'll remember 2010, the Giants winning the World Series when you guys were in high school and how cool that was. And you'll tell your kids and you'll tell your friends in the year 2040 that way back in 2010, it was really cool. The whole community was just activated and vibrant. And there was people selling t-shirts on El Camino. And I mean, it was, it's, it's fun. Um, now that I've switched to news, it's a little different. It's not as fun. I don't go into locker rooms and people spray champagne on me like we, like we did with the Giants, uh, but it's challenging. And once again, it comes back to community. Um, there are difficult stories that we cover, um, but at the same time, important stories. You, you've heard about the story about Sierra Lamar, the, the, the teenage girl that's missing. That's hard. You know, I interview her father and I've sat down with him at length and it's hard to talk to a parent whose child is missing and, and presumed dead. And you know, he's tearing up in front of me and you, and you just put yourself in his, his position. So these stories are difficult now. Um, but then even last night, I don't know if you guys tuned into the news or checked online, but you know, President Obama coming in. It's pretty cool. You know, I got home last night from work and thought I do this most of the time, but last night especially, well, that was a cool day at work. You know, during the six o'clock news, my co-anchor and I, Jessica Geary, all of a sudden, Air Force One is arriving at Moffett Field. And it happened at 6.25 in the newscast. And here I am talking as Air Force One touches down, the president you know, does the classic wave and he's coming down. This is about a 15 minute period of commercial free, uninterrupted, us talking, just ad-libbing about the president 
arriving in the Bay Area and what he's doing here and the supporters and the protesters and so forth. So that's a cool day at work. And it comes back to that thing. If you can find something that you're passionate about, it is really not going to work at all. And you might not know what you all are going to do, but stay active and stay passionate and stay just engaged um, in what you might want to do. And it'll lead to good things. Um, challenges going on now in the media, well, you all probably get most of your news online or via Twitter or Facebook, but you also watch the news as well. So it's a combination of what we do at NBC and at the other networks. Uh, we're online, we're also, of course, on the web, and, and that's, you have to combine it both. No one's figured out quite yet how to combine this new media with the old traditional media, and it's kind of work in progress. So you are in a great spot. You will, you not will, you are defining how all of us will get our news, and not just next year, but in the years to come. So we're all in this transition together now of how we get news. When I was your age, I sound like an old man, but when I was your age, it was just strictly, you go out to the front porch, you get the morning paper, you read it, that's how you got your news, you watch TV that night, and really, that's how you got your news. Now, all of a sudden, obviously, things have changed. So it's an exciting change as well. Okay, I want to do a couple of questions and answers. If you have some questions, let me know through this, or some comments, I would love to, um, to hear from you. But really, that's kind of what I wanted to pass along to you, is of uh, just how to approach things and my career as well. Do you have any questions? Any comments? Someone has to. You guys watch any TV? You're sitting in the front row. <laughs> any of the parents? Do you have some comments? Yes, in the back. question was, we now, NBC, here in the Bay Area, has a big investigative unit. And no, none of the other stations have, most of the stations don't have an investigative unit. And if they do, it's maybe one or two people. We have 15 people. It's already been lost. If you go 15 years ago, or even 10 years ago, almost every station in the country had an investigative team and a unit. As a watchdog, you know, if politicians are mismanaging money, they'll call you on it, investigative teams. If someone's doing something wrong uh, with taxpayers' money, an investigative team is going to call you on it. They're going to find out. Most of this is public record. But with 2007, 2008, 2009, when the economy went down, guess what? You chop it. You guys deal with it right now. Gun High School and every other high school of budget cuts. You might have teachers or services that have been, have been cut. Same thing in, in TV newsrooms. We had cuts. Every station had cut, so investigative teams were cut. We have now replenished our investigative team, and it's been eye-opening. If you haven't, you should tune in. You should see what these guys and gals are doing. They are call, they're changing rules for city councils. They're, they're calling out politicians who have just been looking the other way and doing things, and now all of a sudden this investigative unit is saying, look, you spent $6 million of taxpayers' money. You misspent it. Can you tell us about it? These politicians are looking at it, and you're like, oh my gosh, how did you know? Well, it's public record, and we're on you now. So to answer your question, yes, it's been lost in most of the stations around the country. And that hurts, because that's a community watchdog. Everyone needs a watchdog. If not, you're going to have a lot of people mismanaging our money. Thankfully, we've replenished an investigative team, and it's working. And it's something that's, that's critical. I mean, that's, that's a foundation of journalism. It's not just to say, hey, the president's in town, or to say, hey, the Giants beat the Brewers last night. But it's to say, hey, here's where your money's going. Here's what city's government's doing. Here's what's happening. And um, it, it's, been, it's been nice to have it back. Did I answer your question a bit there? <laughs> yes? So, I'm actually interested in being a sports fan for myself. Um, and I like, um, I'm just interested in knowing how, um, how I could potentially get like contact to maybe the professional teams or the, or the college teams. How do how would you say to approach that? Because you know I, I do broadcasting here at school and outside of school, but I want to like as you said, I want that back door like yeah. and how. How do you think I should approach, you know, trying to 
you know, talk to, let's say, Dwayne Cunt, for example, or any other broadcaster here in the Bay Area? Well, reach out to them. Find out their email address. Find out a number. Find out, you know, go to a Giants game. Wait for Dwayne to walk out of the stadium. Get creative. Find out through your family and friends, through your teachers, through whoever. Hey, does anyone know Dwayne Kuyper, for example? Um, does anyone know Raj Mathai, if you want to do news or something? You know, get, get to that. I've heard he's a decent guy. He might be able to track him down. Um, get creative. You know, find an email. Um, show up at a game. Don't stalk anyone, but, you know. <laughs> um, but, you know, obviously you're already in broadcasting, so, you know, you, you have some... You know, you have something to stand on when you show up and or email someone and say, "Look, I'm already, uh, you know, a broadcaster in high school, and I want to, I want to advance my career." You know, this goes for any career that that you want to get into. Yes. Well, are you satisfied with your job? And if you're not, where do you want it? Where do you want to go in the future? Um, I'm very satisfied with my job, um, but I also always am looking for a challenge. In fact. Probably the, the biggest reason why I left sportscasting and, and got into news was that um, I wanted a different challenge. Um, I had been a sportscaster in this market for, and I grew up here, you know, so for, for 12 years. And I love it. I love sports. I love those challenges. But I just wanted a different set of challenges as my career was advancing. So the news opportunity came, and it's been a great challenge for the last year. And, I don't know what's next. In a, in a few years or a few months or maybe 40 years from now, I might say, okay, time for a different challenge. But right now, I'm in a, in a great spot, very challenged, very, it, it, it tests me, um, and it's very satisfying to answer your question. Um, but it's been satisfying for me since I was seven years old. You know, I wrote for all my school newspapers. I delivered newspapers. Um, I, I did a lot of things to, to, to get to this. This is, it's in my blood, so it, it's something I love. Yes? I admit I don't watch that much TV, but for all the screen networks, whenever I turn on the TV, there's so much crime coverage. It really causes us to just turn off the TV from the local news. A lot of crime coverage on local news, and that's believe me, you're not the you're not the only person that says this. It, it's it's something that I don't really enjoy as much as well. Um, and there's no real definitive answer other than keep watching because there is a lot of crime, but there are also some great stories we do. The investigative unit, we also do a lot of community-based stories. So it's a bag of a lot of things in there. And I wish I could tell you something where, you know what, we cover no crime at all. But it's been, it is, it is a, a mixed bag of what we have. It's, I mean, unfortunately, it is news and crime and, and what we have to cover. So it, it is something that we have to cover. Um, but I understand what you're saying, because a lot of people do say it. Is there more to just blood and guts on the streets? And yes, there is. And, and that's why we've added these investigative teams. Um, we also do a great story about just people that make us Bay Area proud, things like that. So there is more. So please, give it, give it a chance. Watch us. That There is more. And if you don't like it, call me, and then we'll try to figure something out. <laughs> okay, guys, one last question. I want to wrap it up because I know you have other great speakers. Yes? Um, you said you had lived um, some of the stuff about Obama. How much influence do you have on the script and what you talk about during the A lot of influence. I mean, I'm the... I'm the one that's going to deliver the news tonight at 5 o'clock and 6 o'clock and 11. If someone writes, um, hey, President Obama has blonde hair in my script, well, obviously that's not the case. So I'm the last line of defense if, uh, if, if something's inaccurate. So I have a lot of influence on the script. And I enjoy writing. So I'll get in there and I'll write a lot of stuff as well. But it's a real collaborative effort at most newsrooms. Everyone's writing. Your producer's writing, your content producers, your anchors, your reporters, and it's, it's, it's a great stew of things, and hopefully you're just getting the best script. Okay, guys, thank you very much. I appreciate it.